Sure. So I'm uh, Richard Lafayette. I uh, am a professor of medicine at Stanford University Medical Center. I'm the founder and director of our glomerular disease center, which um, encapsulates patient care and also a lot of patient trials, some basic science studies, and a lot of translational medicine. IJ nephropathy is known as the most common primary glomerular disease in the world. And what that amounts to in the United States is that about three to 5,000 people will get the disease each year. And it's thought that um, prevalence of the disease, the people who have the problem on an ongoing basis is about 100 to 150,000 Americans. Uh, the disease can present with lots of symptoms, with swelling and fatigue and obvious blood in the urine. And in those cases, patients often seek out attention and get diagnosed quickly, but can often be asymptomatic where there's only invisible blood in the urine, protein in the urine. There may be subtle increases in blood pressure and even early loss in kidney function. And people don't know until they go to the doctor for some other reason, get blood and maybe urine tests done. And those patients often are discovered relatively late um, and hopefully not too late to intervene and make them better. So that's where we sort of stand with the disease right now. So if the disease is indeed recognized and it usually has to be diagnosed by kidney biopsy, then the standard approach is to really try to do general things that are good for the kidney, which includes a diet and avoid too much salt and too much protein in the diet to try to stay fit and thin because being overweight can actually put increased workload on the kidneys and make them uh, fail more quickly with any kidney disease. A huge component of this is um, blood pressure control. And another is to avoid other drugs, which when your kidneys are weak, could be harmful, like non anti-inflammatory drugs. For the blood pressure, there's pretty clear evidence that we want to control the blood pressure pretty aggressively to less than 120 over even 75 millimeters of mercury. And to do this, we'll use medications called renin angiotensin system inhibitors because they've been shown to be preferentially effective at protecting the kidney over the long run. Um, so much so that even patients who have normal blood pressure but are shown to be at risk from IgA nephropathy should be treated with these agents as well. Thank you.